Hi, if you've been following this channel, you may have noticed I haven't uploaded or pre a pre-recorded video in a while. Uh, and that's because I'm kind of getting out of the book reviewing game. Uh, frankly, the overlap between books that make for good content like this and books that I want to read because they make me a better writer have almost no overlap whatsoever. Uh, and I'm going to be choosing to read books that help me produce better novels. That's more important than making content on YouTube. That said, every once in a while, I'm going to pick up a book for my own benefit, read it, and go, Ooh, I gotta talk about this. And that happened because uh, last week I read Ishi Wells' The Time Machine. And boy, do I have some opinions about that piece. Uh, before you get defensive about this famous book, uh, the author himself agrees it's not very good. He wrote it when he was young. He looks back and says there were some mistakes. And they, they're almost bizarre mistakes, in my opinion. Now, you can get it on Amazon for a couple bucks. Uh, not Amazon, Audible for a couple bucks. It's a short read. It is pivotal to the genre. It's probably still worth consuming despite the flaws, despite the fact that it's basically a weird political rant that is either a refutation of itself or a self-report. It's hard to tell which. I'd have to like read a biography on Wells, but I'm saving that for after reading War of the Worlds. Um, it frustrated me because it seems to have been aware of what it was capable of being, and then chose to be kind of a dumb political rant instead. Now, at a prose level, I liked it. Uh, so all the writing was fine. The character, uh, there, there's, can't really say there was much dialogue. There, there's this interesting framing device of the narrator is essentially a journalist that he hears the story from the scientist, the, the time traveler, uh, and he's writing down what he what he was told by this man about his journey into the year 800,000-800-something. Uh, and I actually find it to be a rather clever framing device. It just doesn't frame something particularly good, in my opinion. Uh, that said, even if you've never read the book, you probably know the story, because it's been imitated by probably a dozen TV shows at this point. I'm pretty sure Futurama directly ripped it off as a homage. It's, it's This book's ancient. It's public domain. What does that even mean to rip that off? Uh, it kind of comes in with some interesting pseudoscience about time just being a fourth dimension. And if you just kind of get... You get a little quirky with the shape of your device and your special parameters. Well, oh, look at that. You can pull a lever and you can move through time. Uh, and the characters themselves, the skeptics, are the ones to say, uh, in, in the very very beginning of the book, uh, the time traveler shows demonstrates with a model before he gets his full machine working, and he sends his machine out away in time. And he doesn't know if it's forward or backwards. One of the skeptics goes, well, it must have gone forward, because if it had gone back in the past, it would have already been here on the table. That primed me for, like, Ooh, this is going to be good. There, there must be good reason that this is such a famous book by a famous author. Uh, and then it picks up even better because he goes to, to the far future on his grand journey. Uh, and he finds this bizarre world where all the problems have seemingly been fixed because communism has been achieved, comrade. Uh, except that it's actually like idiocracy to an extreme beyond even what idiocracy has where... Uh, makes a rather interesting point that if there are no challenges, if there's no unexpected circumstances, if there's nothing to stimulate the mind, you're not going to have a mind. Now, could that happen in 800,000 years where they regress to um, invalid baby chimpanzees, essentially? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, so... There's kind of, So he finds himself in this world, and he's just kind of exploring it out of curiosity until he learns that there are these monsters living underground that the barely able to communicate denizens of the year 800,000 uh, are terrified of. Uh, and then, boom, the stakes go up because the time machine is missing. And at that moment, I was just like, oh, this is going to be great. What's the paradox? And I... I find myself asking that question until the book was done because the book doesn't have a paradox.
Maybe that's me being whiny and spoiled by books that have come after, because, sure, Time Machine is the book that gave the name Time Machine. Like, it's called because of that book. Uh, standing on the shoulders of giants kind of problem, maybe. But I point back to my beginning. He was aware that time travel creates paradoxes and then chose to not use that because spoilers it literally was just stolen by morlocks and he had to like fight his way in through these unthinking savages that are are still carnivorous while the glorious bourgeoisie uh, comrades of communism have gone fully vegetarian because that's the future that's the arrow of history going towards progress uh, and they literally just made off with it, and he has to break his way in, uh, and, you know, he uses fire and light because they're nocturnal cave dwellers. And, and there's kind of nothing more to it, and that's why I'm frustrated. Uh, at, when he finally gets his time machine back, that's where you get the, oh, let me go to the far future where the sun burns out and the earth is destroyed and then there's nothing, and then uh, it manages to come back and tell his story. You you, I, you almost certainly already know the plot. I don't think I'm spoiling anything. You know the plot. You've seen it if you consume any amount of media. Uh, it's a, So it's a time travel story that is almost indistinguishable from bog standard isekai. Which, okay. It, it was written so long ago that it predates John Carter. Like, going to other worlds wasn't even really a thing at the time. But it's just not impressive. I'm hopeful for War of the Worlds because, like I said, he wrote The Time Machine when he was very young. He developed as a writer. He established his fame for later works. And then they're like, hey, this other thing's pretty good. But who writes a time travel story without exploring time travel? I honestly feel like, aside from brushing up on my history of the genres, I kind of walked out of that having achieved nothing in the realm of new ideas, new inspiration to pull from, new ways to tell stories. Perhaps because it's been beaten and rehashed so many times. Who writes a time travel story and doesn't really use the time travel? I, I, I just can't get over that. Given the short length, I will rate uh, the time machine as readable given the historical impact on the genres i'd say it's probably still worth your time just go into it with your hopes down it is mostly a political rant that i, I perhaps i should say the character is making a political rant that the author himself is a bit more self-aware of hilarious in my opinion that he goes farther in the future and everything's turned into crabs uh Complete has to, that has to be a complete coincidence because there's no way back at the time they understood everything was evolving into crabs. Crabs of the future, apparently. Um, so he, he just portrayed a future where humanity had been wiped out by the choices of progress, presumably. Uh, and then goes on and on and on to, to this nihilist, oh, everything's going to be destroyed in the end. God forbid we expand multiple planets. Probably didn't even occur to Wells at that time, except... He's also the quintessential alien invasion guy. Uh, just wasn't in scope of the story, I guess. It's a short story, keep in mind. Uh, like I said, the audiobook of it is four and a half hours, I think, when I, when I sped it up. If you are a writer going in to write a time travel story, Maybe read it just to say that you've read it. I don't think anyone is going to read this and get, like, deep inspiration about this. Um, the idea that there are still going to be museums and relics after 800,000 years, that they're just so perfectly hermetically sealed and there's no damage and there's no chemical breakdown, oh, that's perhaps outside the realm of scientific understanding at the time. It, cr it helped move the plot along. It drove in the themes. So I guess I guess turn off the science part of your brain uh, when you consume that portion of the story. Uh, the framing device holds up perfectly. I actually really liked the scenes in modern England. Um, short book that left me wanting, though. I really, really thought that when the time machine was missing, that what was being set up 
uh, was that he from the past had gone and needed that second machine and he had to go do something else with it and he had to return it. And then, oh, oh, he has to come back and make sure that he actually does that and gets it back so that the, so that the timeline is a complete loop. That's really where I thought it was going. That's the kind of plot that you can quickly get through uh, with basically accomplishing more. There's a lot where just not... Much happens, like get, they get attacked by gorillas, these Morlocks in the woods in the dark, and, set, and he starts a forest fire. That really could have been shifted out a few centuries to a different point in time where he needed the time machine to get back and forth. I don't know why that wasn't pursued. Maybe it's because H.G. Wells is a better author, and I just can't, um, I can't comprehend his genius, but I, I don't see it. If this had been a 10-hour audiobook, I would say it was garbage. Four hour audiobook, so it doesn't take it doesn't expect as much from you for the amount that it gives. It's a pretty it's a pretty fair exchange, and it did set up better time travel stories. Despite the fact that I think time travel is a disaster that I have exactly one plan. One, I have one way I think I can write a good time travel story. And I'll get to that sometime in the future. Uh because I've got all this stuff to write. I'm not going to do that in my main timeline. It just causes messes. Uh, time travel stories typically have to be self-contained, like this is the end, or you just end up self-contradicting yourself and retconning things and changing authors and becoming the absolute god-awful mess that is modern Doctor Who. So, uh, readable, I guess, because of the short time, the historical significance, but not really for any other reason. There's my review. There's my rant of it. You're not probably going to be seeing many more book reviews out of me. I am going to be making other pre-recorded video content. And as usual, you can support me by buying books. You can join the book club. We're reading um, Hyperion by Dan Simmons. And actually, that's the reason I read The Time Machine is I wanted to finish Hyperion right before the live stream, which means I needed to kind of read other stuff first. I went through a bunch of Dungeon Crawl of Carl, and then I was like, Maybe I should read something with some more merit to it than Dungeon Crawler Carl. Frankly, I like the uh, the stupid Dungeon Crawler story more, though. Sue me. Maybe call, say I have bad taste or something. But until then, uh, you'll be seeing more, more from me on this channel. Not just live streams.